five wits went halting off, and now is the whole man governed with one. Who is his companion now? He hath every month a new sworn brother. He is most in the company of the right noble Claudio. Oh, Lord, he will hang upon him like a disease. God help the noble Claudio. You will never run mad, niece. No, not until a hot January. Don Pedro is approached. Good Signor Leonardo, I think this is your daughter. Her mother hath many times told me so. Were you in doubt, sir, that you asked her? Signor Benedict, no, for then you were a child. If Signor Leonardo be her father, she would not have his head on her shoulders for all Messina, as like him as she is. I wonder that you will still be talking, Signor Benedict. Nobody marks you. What, my dear lady, disdain? Are you yet living? Is it possible disdain should die while she hath such meat food to feed it as Signor Benedict? Courtesy itself must convert to disdain if you'll come in her presence. Then is courtesy a turncoat, but it is certain I am loved of all ladies, only you excepted. And I would that I could find in my heart that I had not a hard heart, but for truly, I love none. A dear happiness to women. I'd rather hear my dog bark at a crow than a man swear that he loves me. God keep your ladyship still in that mind, so some gentleman or other escape a predestinate scratched face. Scratching could not make it worse, as twere a face as yours were. Signor Claudio and Signor Benedict, my dear friend Leonardo has invited you to stay here at least a month. I dare swear he is no hypocrite, but praise from his heart. If you swear, my lord, you shall not be forsworn. Let me bid you welcome, my lord. Being reconciled to the prince, your brother, I owe you all duty. I thank you. I am not of many words, but I thank you. Please, at your grace, lead on. Sorry, internet just broke. Uh, Benedict, didst thou note the daughter of Signor Leonardo? I noted her not, but I looked on her. She is not a modest young lady. Why, faith, methinks she's too low for a highborn, too brown for a fair praise, and too little for great praise. I do not like her. In mine eyes, she is the sweetest lady that I have ever looked on. I can see yet without spectacles, and I see no such matter. But I hope you have no intent to turn husband, have you? I would scarce trust myself, though I had sworn the contrary, if Hera would be my wife. What secret hath held you here? He is in love with Hero, Leonato's short daughter. Amen if you love her, for the lady is very well worthy. That I love her, I feel. That she is worthy, I know. I neither feel how she should be loved, nor know how she should be worthy. Thou wast ever an obstinate hip heretic. That a woman conceived me, I thank her. That she brought me up, I likewise give her most humble thanks. But that I will live a bachelor, all women shall pardon me. I shall see thee, ere I die, look pale with love. With anger, with sickness, or with hunger, my lord, not with love. My liege, your highness now may do me good. I know we shall have, some, have reveling tonight. I would assume thy part in some disguise and tell fear hero I am Claudio, and in her bosom I'll unclasp my heart. Then after to her father I will break, and the conclusion is she shall be thine. My lord, why are you thus out of measure sad? There is no measure in the occasion that breathes, therefore the sadness is without limit. You have of late stood out against your brother. It is needful that you frame the season for your own harvest. I had rather be a canker in a hedge than a rose in his grace. And it better fits my blood to be disdained of all than to fashion a carriage to rob love from any. Yea, my, my brother trusts me, but with a muzzle. Therefore I have decreed not to sing in my cage. 
Can you make no use of your discontent? What news, Baracchio? I can give you intelligence of an intended marriage. Will it serve for any model to build mischief on? Marry. It is your brother's right hand. Who? The most exquisite Claudio? He wishes to marry Hero, the daughter and heir of Leonardo. I heard it decreed upon that the prince should woo Hero for himself, and having obtained her, to give her to Count Claudio. <laughs> this may prove food to my displeasure. That young startup hath all the glory of my overthrow. If I can cross him any way, I bless myself every way. You are both sure and will assist me. To the death, my lord. <laughs> Was not Count John here at supper? No, I saw him not. He is of a very melancholy disposition. Partly that gentleman looks. I never can see him, but I am heartburned an hour after. By my troth, niece, that will never get thee a husband if thou be so shrewd of thy tongue. In faith, she's too cursed. I pray upon my knees every morning and evening. Lord, I could not endure a husband with a beard on his face. I'd rather lie in the woollen. You may light on a husband that hath no beard. What should I do with him? Dress him in my apparel and make him my waiting gentlewoman. Well, niece, I hope to see you one day fitted with a husband. Not till God make men of some other metal than earth. No, uncle, I'll none. Daughter, remember what I told you. If the prince do solicit you in that kind, you know your answer. Oh, the revellers are entering. Lady, will you walk with me in your company? I may say so when I please. And when please you to say so. When I like your favour, for God defend the loot should be like the case. Well, I would did you like me. So would not I for your own sake, for I have many ill qualities. <laughs> Which is one? I say my prayers aloud. I love you better. The hearers may cry, Amen. God match me with a good dancer. Amen. I know you well enough. You're Signor Antonio. That's a word I am not. I know you by the waggling of your head. To tell true, I counterfeited him. Will you not tell me who you are or who told you? Not a now. Well, this must have been Signor Benedict that said so. Uh, what said he? I'm sure you know him well enough. Uh, not I, believe for me. Did he never make you laugh? I pray you, what is he? Why, he is the prince's jester, a very dull fool. When I know the gentleman, I'll tell him what you say. Do, do. Claudia remains. I know him by his bearing. Are not you, Signor Benedict? You know me well. I am he. Signor, you are very near my brother in his love. He is enamoured on Hero. I pray you, dissuade him from her. How know you he loves her? I heard him swear his affection. Oh, so did I too. And he swore he would marry her tonight. Thus answer I in the name of Benedict, but hear these ill news with the ears of Claudia. Tis clear so the prince woos for himself. Friendship is constant in all the other things, save in the office and affairs of love. Farewell, therefore, hero. Count Claudio, come, will you go with me? The prince hath got your hero. 
I wish him joy of her. But did you think the prince would serve you thus? I pray you leave me. <laughs> if it will not be, I will leave you. Oh, alas, poor hurt fowl. That my lady Beatrice should know me and not know me. The prince's fool. Huh. Well, I'll be revenged as I may. Now, Signor, where's the Count? Did you see him? Uh, why, how now, Count? Wherefore are you sad? Not sad, my lord. How then? Sick? The Count is neither sad, nor sick, nor merry, nor well, but civil Count. Civil as an orange and something of that jealous complexion. Here, Claudio, I have wooed in thy name. And fair hero is one. I have broke with her father, and his good will obtained. Name the day of marriage, and God give thee joy. Count, take of me my daughter, and with her my fortunes. His grace hath made the match, and all grace say amen to it. Hey, Count, tis you, your cue. Silence is the perfect Miss Herald of joy. I wish... I were but little happy if I could say how much. Lady, as you are mine, I am yours. Speak, cousin, or if you cannot, stop his mouth with a kiss and let him not speak neither. In faith, lady, you have a merry heart. Good Lord, for alliance. Thus goes everyone to the world, but I, and I am sunburnt. I may sit in a corner and cry, hey ho for a husband. Lady Beatrice, I will get you one. Will you have me? No, my lord, unless I might have another for working days. Your grace is too costly to wear every day. Niece, will you look to those things I told you of? I cry you mercy, uncle, by your grace's pardon. By my troth, a pleasant spirited lady, but she cannot endure to hear tell of a husband. Oh, by no means. She mocks all her wooers out of suit. Oh, she were an excellent wife for Benedict. Oh, Lord, my Lord, if they were but a week married, they would talk themselves mad. I will undertake one of Hercules' labours, which is to bring Signor Benedict and the Lady Beatrice into a mountain of affection, the one with the other. My lord, I am for you. <laughs> and I, my lord. And you too, gentle hero. I will do any modest office, my lord, to help my cousin to a good husband. If we can do this, Cupid is no longer an archer. His glory shall be ours, for we are the only love gods. It is so. The Count Claudio shall marry the daughter of Leonato. Yea, my lord, but I can cross it. How canst thou cross this marriage? I think I told your lordship a year since how much I am in the favour of Margaret, the waiting gentlewoman to hero. I can at any unseasonable instant of the night appoint her to look out at the lady's chamber window. What life is in that to be the death of this marriage? The poison that lies in you to temper. Go you to your, the prince, your brother, and Count Claudio, and tell them that you know that Hero loves me. They will scarcely believe this without trial, so they will see me at a chamber window. Call me Margaret Hero. Here, Margaret, call me Claudio. Be cunning in the working this, and thy fee is a thousand ducats. I do much wonder that one man, seeing how much another man is a fool when he dedicates his behaviours to love, will, after he has laughed at such shallow follies in others, become the argument of his own scorn by falling in love. Oh, such a man is Claudio. Ah, the prince and the Monsieur Love. I will hide me in the arbour. Come hither, Leonardo. What was it you told me of today, that your niece Beatrice was in love with Signor Benedict? I did never think that lady would have loved any man. 
No, nor I, neither. But most wonderful that she should so dote on Signor Benedict, whom she hath in all outward behaviours seemed ever to abhor. Why, what effects of passion show she? Bait the hook well, the fish will bite. What effects, my lord? You heard my daughter tell you how. I would have thought her spirit had been invincible against all sorts of affection. I would have sworn it had my lord, I, I would have sworn it had my lord, especially against Benedict. I should think this a gull, but that white bearded fellow speaks it. He hath taken the infection, hold it up. Has she made her affection known to Benedict? No, and swears she never will. That's her torment. She wrote him of her love, but tore the letter into a thousand halfpence, railed at herself that she should be so immodest. Then down upon her knees she falls, weeps, sobs, beats her heart, tears her hair, prays, curses, oh, sweet Benedict. It were good that Benedict knew of it by some other, if she will not discover it. To what end? He would make but a sport of it and torment the poor lady worse. And he should, it were an arms to hang him. She is an excellent, sweet lady and virtuous. And she is exceeding wise. In everything but in loving Benedict. Hero thinks she will, surely she will die, for she says she will die. If he love her not, then she will die. Ere she make her love known, and she will die. If he woo her, rather than she will bait one more breath of her accustomed crossness. Shall we go seek Benedict and tell him of her love? Never tell him, my lord. Let him wear it out with good counsel. Nay, that's impossible. She may wear her heart out first. I love Benedict well, and I could wish he would modestly examine himself to see how much he is unworthy of so good a lady. If he did not dote on her upon this, I will never trust my expectation. Let there be the same net spread for her, and that must your daughter and her gentlewoman carry. This can be no trick. The conference was sadly born. They have the truth of this from Hero. They seem to pity the lady. It seems her affections have their full bent. Love me. I did never think to marry. I've railed so long against marriage, but doth not the appetite alter? Here comes Beatrice. By this day, she's a fair lady. I do spy some marks of love in her. Against my will, I am sent to bid you come in to dinner. Fair Beatrice, I thank you for your pains. Oh, no more pains for those thanks than you would take pains to thank me. If it had been painful, I would not have come. Well, then you take pleasure in the message. Yes, just as much as you may take upon a knife's point and choke a door withal. You have no stomach, Signor. Fare you well. Aha. Uh -huh. Against my will, I am sent to bid you come to dinner. There's a double meaning in that. Good Margaret, run thee to the parlour, tell Beatrice I and Ursula walk in the orchard, and our whole discourse is all of her. I'll make her come. Now, Ursula, when Beatrice doth come, our talk must only be of Benedict. When I do name him, let it be thy part to praise him more than any man ever did merit. My talk to thee must be how Benedict is sick in love with Beatrice. Now, begin. Are you sure that Benedict loved Beatrice so entirely? So says the prince and my new troth lord. They did entreat me to acquaint her of it, but I persuaded them, if they loved Benedict, to wish him wrestle with affection and never to let Beatrice know of it. Why did you so? Nature never framed a woman's heart of prouder stuff than that of Beatrice. Disdain and scorn ride sparkling in her eyes, misprising what they look on, and her wit values itself so highly that, to her, all matter else seems weak. She cannot love. If knew his love, she would make sport at it. And who dare tell her so? If I should speak, she would mock me into air. Yet tell it of her. Hear what she will say. 
No, rather I will go to Benedict and counsel him to fight against his passion. She cannot be so much without true judgment, having so swift and excellent a wit as she is prized to have, as to refuse so rare a gentleman as Signor Benedict. Indeed, he hath an excellent good name. We have caught her, madam. If it proves so, then loving goes by haps. Some Cupid kills with arrows, some with traps. What fire is in mine ears? Can this be true? Stand I condemned for pride and scorn so much? And Benedict, love on, I will requite thee, taming my wild heart to thy loving hand. I hope he be in love. There is no appearance of fancy in him, unless it be a fancy that he hath to strange disguises. For my life, he goes to speak with Leonardo about Beatrice. It is even so. Hero and Margaret have by this played their parts with Beatrice, and then the two bears will not fight one another when they meet. My lord and brother, God save you. Good den, brother. If your leisure served, I would speak with you. In private? if it please you. Yet Count Claudio may hear, for what I would speak of concerns him. What's the matter? It means your lordship to be married tomorrow. You know he does. I know not that, when he knows what I know. If there be any impediment, I pray you discover it. Why, what's the matter? <laughs> I came hither to tell you the lady is disloyal. Who? Hero? Even she. Disloyal. The word is too good to paint out her wickedness. Go but with me tonight. You shall see her chamber window entered, even the night before her wedding day. If you love her then, tomorrow wed her. But it would better fit your honour to change your mind. May this be so? I will not think it. If I see anything tonight, why I should not marry her tomorrow in the congression. Where I should wed, there will I shame her. And as I woo thee to obtain her, I will join with thee to disgrace her. Are you good men and true? Yea, or else it were pity that they should suffer salvation, body and soul. Nay, that were a punishment too good for them. If they should have any allegiance in them, being chosen for the prince's watch. Well, give them their charge, naked dog breed. First, who think you the most desertless man to be constable? Oh, huge otter cake, sir. Or G George Seacole, for they can write and read. No, oh, uh, come hither, neighbour Seacole. To be a well-favoured man is the gift of fortune, but to read and write comes by nature. Which, Master Constable? You have. I knew it would be your answer. But make no boast of it. And for your writing and reading, let that appear when there is no need of such vanity. <clears throat> you are thought here to be the most senseless and fit man for the constable of the watch. And therefore, bear you the lantern. Uh, this is your charge. You shall comprehend all Vagrom men. You are to bid any man stand in the prince's name. Uh, how if I will not stand? Well, why then take no note of him, but let him go. Uh, and presently call the rest of the watch together and thank God you are rid of a knave. If he will not stand and eat when he is bidden, he is none of the prince's subjects. True. And they are to meddle with none but the prince's subjects. You shall also make no noise in the streets. For, for the watch to babble and talk is most tolerable and not to be endured. We will rather sleep than talk. We know not what belongs to a watch. 
Well, you speak like an ancient and most quiet watchman. But, well, I cannot see how sleeping should offend. Uh, only uh, have a care that your bills be not stolen. Yeah, well, yeah, you are to call at all the alehouses and bid those that are drunk get them to bed. How if they will not? Now, yeah, why then, let them alone till they are sober. If they make you not, then the better answer. Well, you may say that they are not the men you took them for. Well, sir. Oh, if you meet a thief and you suspect him to be no true man, and the less you meddle and make with them, the more is for your honesty. If we know him to be a thief, shall we not lay hands on him? Well, truly, by your office, you may, but I think the most peaceable way for you is to let him show himself what he is and steal out of your company. Oh, you have been always called a merciful man, partner. Oh, truly, I would not hang a dog by my will, much more a man who hath any honesty in him. If you hear a child cry in the night, you must call to the nurse and bid her still it. Oh, if the nurse be asleep and will not hear us. Well, why then depart in peace and let the child wake her with crying? Very good. Well, masters, good night. And if there be any matter of weight chances, call me up. Now, keep your fellows' counsels and your own and uh, good night. Yeah, come, neighbour. Well... We hear our charge. Let us go sit here upon the church bench till two and then all to bed. Oh, uh, one more word, honest neighbours. I pray you, watch about Signor Leonardo's door. Hmm? For the wedding being there tomorrow, well, there is a great coil tonight. Adieu, be vigilant, vigilant, I beseech you. Conrad, I say, now forward with thy tail. Stand thee close and then under this penthouse. Some treason yet stand close. Therefore, no, I have earned of Don John a thousand ducats. Is it possible that any villainy should be so dear? Thou shouldst rather ask if it were possible any villainy should be so rich. But when rich villains have need of poor ones, poor ones may make what price they will. I wonder at it. Seest thou what a deformed thief fashion is? How giddily it turns about all the hot bloods between 14 and 5 and 30. I know that deformed has been a vile thief. Didst thou hit somebody? No, t'was the vein on the house. Why hast thou shifted out of thy tail into telling me of the fashion? Just that fashion is a villain for ever changing appearances. I have tonight wooed Margaret, the Lady Hero's gentlewoman, by the name of Hero. She leans out at her mistress's chamber window, bids me a thousand times good night, while the prince, Claudio, and my master, planted and placed and possessed by my master, Don John, saw afar in the orchard the amiable encounter and thought they, Margaret, was hero. They did. Or oh, we charge you in the prince's name, stand. Call up the right master, constable. We have here recovered the most dangerous piece of lechery that ever was known in the Commonwealth. And one deformed as one of them. Masters, masters. You'll be made bring deformed forth, I warrant you. Masters. Never speak, we charge you, let us obey you to go with us. Come, we will obey you. Good Ursula, wake my cousin Beatrice and desire her to rise. I will, lady. Good Meg, I'll wear this. By my trust, not so good. And I warrant your cousin will say so. Good morrow, cuz. Good morrow, sweet hero. Why, how now? Do you speak in the sick tune? 
I am out of all other tune, methinks. Oh. Tis almost five o'clock, cousin. Tis time you were ready. By my troth, I am exceeding ill. These gloves the Count sent me, they are an excellent perfume. I am stuffed, cousin. I cannot smell. Get you some of this distilled herbs, Cardus Benedictus, and lay it to your heart. Tis the only thing for a qualm. There thou prickest her with a thistle. Benedictus? Why Benedictus? You have some moral in this Benedictus. Moral? No, by my throat. I have no moral meaning. I meant plain holy thistle. You may think perchance that I think that you are in love. Neighbour lady, I am not such a fool to think what I lift, nor I lift not to think what I can, nor indeed I cannot think if I would think my heart out of thinking that you are in love, or that you will be in love, or that you can be in love. Yet Benedict was such another, and now he's become a man. War he would never marry. And yet now, in spite of his heart, he eats his meat without grudging. And how you may be converted, I know not, but methinks you look with your eyes as other women do. What pace is this that thy tongue keeps? Not a fault, Gallop. Madam, withdraw. The Prince, the Count, Signor Benedict, Don Juan, and all the gallants of the town are come to fetch you to church. Help to dress me, good cuz, good mag, good Ursula. What would we with me, honest neighbour? Uh, marry, sir, I would have some confidence with you that discerns you nearly. Brief, I pray you, for you see it is a busy time with me. Uh, marry, this it is, sir. Yes, in truth it is, sir. What is it, my good friends? Goodman Verges, sir, speaks a little off the matter. An old man, sir, and his wits are not so blunt. As God help, I would desire they were. Yes, I thank God I am as honest as any man living, and as an old man, and no honester than I. Comparisons are odorous, palabrous, neighbour verges. Neighbours, you are tedious. Well, it pleases your worship to say so, but we are the poor duke's officers. But... Truly, for my own part, I could never be so tedious as a king. All thy tedious on me, eh? Yea, I be but a poor man. And so am I. I would fain know what you have to say. Marry, sir, out watch tonight, excepting your worship's presence, has taken a couple of as arrant knaves as any in Messina. One word, sir. Our watch, sir, have indeed comprehended two auspicious persons, and we would have them this morning examined before your worship. Take their examination yourself and bring it me. I am now in great haste, as it may appear unto you. It shall be sufficient. Fare you well. Hmm. We are now to examination these men. And we must do it wisely. We will spare for no wit, I warrant you. Come, Friar Francis, be brief. You come hither, my lord, to marry this lady. No. To be married to her. Friar, you come to marry her. Lady, you come hither to be married to this Count. I do. If either of you know any inward impediment why you should not be conjoined, charge you on your souls to utter it. Know you any hero? None, my lord. Know you any Count? I dare make his answer, none. Stand thee by, Friar. Father, by your leave, will you give me this maiden, your daughter? As freely, son, as God did give her me. Dear Leonata, 
Take her back again. Give not this rotten orange to your friend. Behold how she blushes here. Her blush is guiltiness. What do you mean, my lord? Is my lord well that he doth speak so wide? Sweet prince, why speak not you? What should I speak? I stand dishonoured. Are these things spoken, or do I but dream? Sir, they are spoken, and these things are true. This looks not like a nuptial. Oh, God, defend me, how I am beset. What kind of catechizing call you this? To make you answer truly to your name. Is it not, hero? Who can blot that name with any just reproach? Marry, that can, hero. Hero itself can blot out hero's virtue. What man was he, what man was he talked to you with like, yesternight? Out of your window, betwixt twelve and one. I talked with no man at that hour, my lord. Leonardo, I am sorry you must hear, upon mine honour, myself, my brother, and this grieved count did see her, hear her, at that hour last night, talk with a ruffian at her chamber window. Oh, hero, what a hero hadst thou been. But fare thee well, most foul, most fair, farewell. Why? How now, cousin? Wherefore sink you down? Come, um, let us go. These things, come thus to light, smother her spirits up. How doth the lady? Dead, I think. Help, uncle. Hero. Why, hero, uncle, Signor Benedict Friar. Oh, fate, take not away thy heavy hand. Have comfort. Wherefore? Oh, on my soul, my cousin is belied. I was with no one at that hour. There is some sage Miss Prisian and the princes. If their wisdoms be misled in this, whose the practice of it lives in John the Bastard, whose spirits toil in the frame of villainies. Pause a while. Your daughter here, the prince has left for dead. Let her a while be secretly kept in and publish it, that she is dead indeed. What will this do? When Claudio hears she died upon his words, the idea of her life shall sweetly creep into his study of imagination. Then shall he mourn, if ever love had interest in his liver, and wish he had not so accused her. Signor Leonardo, let the friar advise you. Being that I flow in grief, the smallest twine may lead me. Come, lady, die to live. Have patience and endure. Lady Beatrice, have you wept all this while? Yes, and I will weep a while longer. I will not desire that. You have no reason. I do it freely. Surely I do believe your fair cousin is wronged. Ah, how much might the man deserve of me that would write her? And is there any way to show such friendship? A very even way, but no such friend. May a man do it? To the man's office, but not yours. I do love nothing in the world so well as you. It's not that strange. As strange as the thing I know not. It were possible for me to say that I love nothing as well as you, but believe me not, and yet I lie not. I confess nothing, nor I deny nothing. I'm sorry for my cousin. Upon my sword, Beatrice, thou lovest me. Do not swear and eat it. I will swear. Will you not eat your word? With no source that can be devised to it. I protest I love thee. I love thee with so much of my heart that none is left to protest. Oh, come, bid, bid me do anything for thee. Kill Claudio. Not for the wide world. You'll kill me to deny it. Farewell. Tarry, sweet Beatrice. I am gone. Though I am here, there is no love in you. Nay, I pray you, let me go. Is Claudio thine enemy? He hath slandered, scorned, dishonoured my kinswoman. Oh, God, that I were a man, I would eat his heart in the marketplace. Hear me, Beatrice. Sweet hero, 
She is wronged. She is slandered. She is undone. Beatrice. Oh, I will die a woman with grieving. Think you in your soul the Count Claudio hath wronged Hero? Yea, as sure as I have a thought or a soul. Enough. I'm engaged. I will challenge him. <clears throat> Is our whole dissembly here? Which be the malefactors? Uh, that am I and my partner. That's certain. We have been exhibitioned. No, which are the offenders that are to be examined? <laughs> what is your name, friend? Baracchio. Pray write down, Baracchio. Uh, yours? My name is Conrad. Write down, Master Gentleman Conrad. Uh, masters, it is proved already that you are little better than false knaves. How answer you for yourselves? Marry, sir, we say we are none. I say to you, it is thought you are false knaves. Sir, I say to you that we are none. Have you written down that they are none? Master Constable, you go not the way to examine. You must call forth the watch that are their accusers. Masters. I charge you, in the prince's name, accuse these men. This, this man there said that Don John, the prince's brother, was a villain. Uh, write that down. Prince John, a villain. Why, th this is flat perjury to call a prince's brother villain. What heard you him say else? Marry, that he hath received a thousand ducats of Don John for accusing the Lady Hero wrongfully. Flat burglary as ever was committed. What else, fellow? And that Count Claudio did mean upon his words to disgrace Hero before the whole assembly and not marry her. Oh, villain, thou wilt be condemned into everlasting redemption for this. And this is more, Masters, than you can deny. All this has come to pass, and Hero has died of grief. Master Constable, let these men be bound and taken to Leonardo. Come, bind them, thou naughty varlet. Way, you are an ass, you are an ass! But dost thou not suspect my place? Dost thou not suspect my years, oh, 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 that he were here to write me down an ass. But masters, remember that I am an ass. Though it not be written down, yet forget not that I am an ass. If you go on thus, you will kill yourself. I pray thee, cease thy counsel. Bring me a father that so loved his child, whose joy of her is overwhelmed like mine. Can counsel and speak comfort this grief? My griefs cry louder than advertisement. Hear you, my lords. We have some haste, Leonardo. Some haste. My lord, well, fare you well, my lord. Are you so hasty now? Well, all is one. Nay, do not quarrel with us, good old man. If he could right himself with quarrelling, some of us would lie low. Who wrongs him? Marry, thou dost wrong me, thou dissembler. I speak not like a dotard nor a fool. Thou hast so wronged mine innocent child and me. Thy slander hath gone through and through her heart, and she lies buried with her ancestors. My villainy. Thine, Claudio, thine, I say. You say not right, old man. Away, I will not have to do with you. My heart is sorry for your daughter's death, but on my honour she was charged with nothing but what was true and very full of proof. See, see, here comes the man we went to seek. 
Good day, my lord. I came to seek you both. We've been up and down to seek thee, for we are high-proof melancholy and would fain have it beaten away. Wilt thou use thy wit? It's in my scabbard. Shall I draw it? I will bid thee draw, as we do the menstruals draw, pleasure us. As I am an honest man, he looks pale. Art thou sick or angry? I think he be angry indeed. You are a villain. I jest not. You have killed a sweet lady, and her death shall fall heavy on you. Let me hear from you. Well, I will meet you. My lord, for your many courtesies, I thank you. Your brother, the bastard, is fled from Mess Messina. You have among you killed a sweet and innocent lady. For my lord Lackbeard there, he and I shall meet. Until then, peace be with him. He is in earnest. In most profound earnest. And I warrant you for the love of Beatrice. And hath challenged thee. Most sincerely. But stop you, let me be. Did he not say my brother was fled? <clears throat> Come you, sir, if justice cannot tame you, well, she shall ne'er weigh more reasons in her balance. Nay, and you be a cursing hypocrite once, you must be looked to. How now? What offence have these men done? <laughs> well, marry, sir, they have committed false report. And moreover, they have spoken untruths. Secondarily, they are slanders. Sixth and lastly, they have belied a lady. Thirdly, they have verified unjust things. And to conclude, they are lying knaves. First, I ask thee what they have done. Thirdly, I ask thee what their offence. Sixth and lastly, why they are committed. And to conclude, what you lay to their charge. Sweet Prince, let, you, let me go no further to my answer. Do you hear me and let this count kill me? I have deceived even your very eyes. What your wisdoms could not discover, these shallow fools have brought to light. Who in the night overheard me confessing to this man how Don John, your brother, incensed me to slander the Lady Hero? How were you brought into the orchard and saw me caught? Margaret, in Hero's garments, how you disgraced her when you should marry her. My villainy they have upon record, which I had still with my death and repeat over to my shame. The Lady is dead upon mine and my master's false accusation. And briefly... I desire nothing but the reward of a villain. Runs not the speech like iron through your blood. I've drunk poison while he uttered it. But did my brother set thee on to this? Yea, and paid me richly for the practice of it. <sighs> Sweet hero. Come, the sexton hath reformed Signor Leonardo of the matter, and masters, do not forget to specify that I am an ass. Art thou the slave that with thy breath has killed mine innocent child? Yea, even I alone. No, not so. Thou beliest thyself. Here stand a pair of honourable men. A third is fled that had a hand in it. I thank you, princes, for my daughter's death. Choose your revenge upon me. I cannot bid you bid my daughter live. Tomorrow morning come you to my house, and since you could not be my son-in-law, be yet my nephew. My brother hath a daughter, almost the copy of my child that's dead, and she alone is heir to both of us. Give her the right you should have given her cousin, and so dies my revenge. Oh, noble sir, your overkindness doth wring tears from me. Uh, sir, this plaintiff here, the offender, did call me ass. That's for thy pains. Oh, God save the foundation. Go, I discharge thee of thy prisoner, and I thank thee. We shall meet again, God prohibit it.
Sweet Beatrice, would thou come when I called thee? Yea, Signor, and depart when you bid me. Oh, stay, but till then. Then is spoken, fare you well now, and yet, ere I go, let me go with that I came, which is with knowing which what passed between you and Claudio. Only foul words, and whereupon I kiss thee. Foul words is but foul wind, and foul wind is but foul breath, and foul breath is noisome, therefore I will depart unkissed. I must tell thee, say, Claudio undergoes my challenge, and either I must shortly hear from him, or I will subscribe him a coward. And I pray thee now, tell me, how doth your cousin? Very ill. How do you? Very ill too. Oh, serve God, love me, and mend. There will I leave you too, for here comes one in haste. Madam, you must come to your uncle. It is proved my lady hero hath been falsely accused. The prince and Claudio mightly abused, and John John is the author of all who is fed and gone. Will you come presently? Will you go hear this news, Signor? I will live in thy heart, die in thy lap, and be buried in thy eyes, and moreover, I will go with thee to thine uncles. Did I not tell you she was innocent? So are the prince and Claudio who accused her. I am glad that all things sought so well. And so am I, being all else by faith enforced to call young Claudio to a reckoning for it. Well, daughter, and you gentlewomen all, withdraw into a chamber by yourselves, and when I send for you, come hither masked. Friar, I, I must entreat your pains, I think. To do what, signor? To bind me or undo me, one of them. Signor Leonardo, truth is, good signor, your niece regards me with an eye of favour. That I, my daughter, lent her, tis most true. And I do, with an eye of love, requite her. What's your will? My will is your good will. May stand with ours this day to be conjoined in the state of honourable marriage. Good morrow to this fair assembly. Good morrow, Prince. Good morrow, Claudio. We here attend you. Are you yet determined today to marry with my brother's daughter? Yes. Call her forth. Brother, here's the friar ready. I do give you her. Why, then she's mine. Sweet, let me see your face. No, that you shall not, till you take her hand before this friar and swear to marry her. Give me your hand. Before this holy friar, I'm your husband, if you like it. And when I lived, I was your other wife. And when you loved, you were my other husband. Another hero? Nothing certainer. One hero died defiled, but I do live. Oh, my hero, a hero that is dead. When, after that, the holy rites are ended, I'll tell you largely of fair hero's death. Meantime, let wonder seem familiar, and to the chapel let us presently. Beatrice, do you not love me? Why, no, no more than reason. Why then, your uncle and the prince and Claudio have been deceived. They swore you did. Did not you love me? Truth, no, no more than reason. Why, then my cousin Margaret and Ursula are much deceived, for they did swear that you did. They swore that you were almost sick for me. They swore that you were well nigh dead for me. Tis no such matter. Then you do not love me. No, truly, but in friendly recompense. Come, cousin, I am sure you love the gentleman. 
and I'll be sworn upon that he loves her, for he is a written paper written in his hand, a haunting sonnet of his own pure brain fashioned to Beatrice. And here's another writ in my cousin's hand, stolen from her pocket, containing her affection unto Benedict. Here's our own hands against our hearts. I would not deny you, but by this good day, I yield upon great persuasion and partly to save your life, for I was told you were in a consumption. Peace. How dost thou, Benedict, the married man? I'll tell thee what, Prince, a college of witchcrackers cannot flout me out of my humour. Come, come, we are friends. Let's have a dance here. We are married, but we may lighten our own hearts and our wives' heels. My lord, your brother John is taken in flight and brought with armed men back to Messina. Think not on him till tomorrow. I'll devise thee brave punishments for him. Strike up, Pipers! <laughs> Engineering music players. Well done. Audience can be applauded. Well done, guys. Yay! Well, thank you all for coming along. Um, as we say, this is a this is a, the first of what what could be several, or or you know, depending on how long these restrictions last. Um, the idea from here on is generally to do a reading once a week, but um, that will depend on what we can get rights for and what we can um, you know whether I'm available. There's one that I'm not for, um, all that sort of stuff. So. Um, I will sometimes do, sorry, what am I saying? There will, yeah, there will sometimes be weeks where we don't have a reading. There will sometimes be weeks where we have a reading like this, which is um, uh, royalty free. And there will be some weeks like next week where we have secured the rights to a play. Um, so I'm very excited to announce that next week we will be reading uh, a one act version of the play Radium Girls. Um, for those who don't know, I've got the, got the blurb about it here somewhere. We have Radium Girls by D.W. Gregory. Um, it's basically about um, radium in 1926. It was a miracle cure. Madame Curie was, was an international celebrity and the latest rage was luminous watches um, until the girls who were painting them began falling sick. So it's about a factory full of girls getting poisoned by their own jobs. Um, and about one particular woman who, who leads a um, fight to get compensation um, through a lawsuit. So it's a bit of a comedy drama. Um, it should be a lot of fun. There's, there's 30 roles um, split. <laughs> 30? <laughs> 30 roles split usually between 10 people. So looking for nine, 10, maybe stretched to a few more. Um, but yeah, it should be a really interesting reading. Um, and yeah, I'm very excited to do that one. So um, for those who have read tonight, um, if you want to be involved, send me an email. For those who haven't, um, the form is now open if you want to fill in your details. Um, I only need the form once. Um, um, and so from now on, once you've got your form filled in, just send me an email saying you're keen to, to be involved in next week's reading and we'll... Um, We'll put you in the mix. Um, can't guarantee we'll, we'll cast everyone every time like we did this time, um, but we'll make sure that, that people get a decent turn um, week on, week out. So thank you very much. Um, thank you. Thank you for organising. That was fun. Well done, Matt, thank for organising. It's great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Feel free to stay and chat or congratulate the cast or whatever. I, I'm heading to the off licence. We're <laughs> 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 absolutely starving. Lovely. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Well Bye. done. Well, Thank, Thank you. you. I loved it. Bye. Thank you, guys. Well done, guys. Bye. As Perry said, yep. camera and stuff not working. I don't know what that was. Thank you very much, Matt.
Matt. That was really good fun. No worries. Thanks for joining. No, it was really good. Um, and um, hopefully see you again. Indeed. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Matt. I'm probably going to do some dinner now because a dinner of just wine is probably not a good idea. Oh, come on. <laughs> well, <laughs> see you soon, Jamie. See you later. Bye. Bye. Oh, I should stop recording.